So welcome to another war game review from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at Mark Holt Walker's Platoon Commander Deluxe, The Battle of Kursk. Very good. Which is put out from Flying Pig Games, and it is designed by... All right, let me get this right. David. David K. Van Hoos. There you go. All right. That was a little bit of a mouthful. The game is a mouthful uh, from a title standpoint, but everything else in it is all quite delightful to play with. Um, yeah, yeah. What you would expect from a Flying Pigs game, first and foremost, is excellent production value. Beautiful. And this has that. Beautiful. Beautiful game. The best maps that they've put out, I think. Both in size. I like the size. Yes. I might be inclined to agree with you. And I like the color choices on these. I did enjoy... I do. I did enjoy the maps from... Armageddon War. Yeah, though. they were good. Considering they were desert maps, at least. Yeah, I mean, a desert map, but it was an attractive. But they had, but they had cool seas. But these are a beautiful, beautiful game. Yeah. Uh, so, Platoon Commander, this is a platoon level game. Each of your counters is a platoon of infantry or a tank platoon. Um, that's the scale of it. And it's a scale that I actually really enjoy because it gives <clears> you a very tactical feel without. All of the crunch of minutia the little, yep. of an individual man with the type of weapon yeah. that he has. Yeah. But things like the terrain, how you move in it, uh, positioning, spotting with artillery, all these other bits and pieces that come into you know hardened target types mm -hmm. and weapon types, it's all in there, so you get that great feel, but the rules are significantly smaller than a lot of tactical games. Yeah. And I, that's, I really enjoy this scale for that reason. Well, and we've played Nations at War yes. from Lock and Load Publishing, which was created by Mark Walker. Oh, yes. So it's it's interesting that he's really continues to do that platoon level and do it very well. I, I love Nations at War. We, we've really enjoyed those plays. Makes me want to play it again. <laughs> um, but I, I think that level and that... Uh, is really up our alley. I, yes. I feel we love tactical. We always talk about that. This gives that same feeling, just a little removed from that, just a little higher. Yeah, it's one. It's like one step higher from kind of squad level games. But you. This doesn't really feel like that. No, it. it, it, uh, it and I like this that. one. You. It feels like a a good squad level style game. Yes. But you get. Big tanks. Oh yeah, and you you know it's, big mothers. You don't have to sit and worry about like, is my you know machine guns ammunition loader crying because he took <laughs> shrapnel to his foot? You don't have to worry about that scale because you've got level. five of them. Yeah, you just in the platoon. You yeah, just rotate them in. It's is my is my platoon like ready or not? You you roll another morale roll of three or less that yeah. we made forty thousand times, which was ironic, and yeah. You shove another loader right in there. In this, so this game is no machine guns. Where we, we were firing anti tank guns, or you'd have the tanks with right. their whole mount of machine guns yeah. firing. Yeah, true. Just, and that's that's one thing that's really cool about this scale mm -hmm. is a tank isn't just a tank. It's four tanks, yeah. or two tanks, depending on what kind of tanks you got. And they have their main gun, so you have an anti tank kind of a um, a round. So you have that as an ammunition yeah. type that you're going to use. You also have a, a, a high explosive or HE value, which you're going to use your home mounted machine guns and things like that. On infantry. To, on infantry, um, leg units as well. So you get the good detail, you know, armor mm. on armor. There's a separate type of calculation for combat, armor versus infantry, infantry versus armor, close assault. You have melee rules, things like that. All of that good stuff that we love. Yeah. But it's very streamlined. And this game does an excellent job of reducing all of that stuff down. Yeah. And you have basically one play aid card. Yeah, th and there's and only that's one very included. Very impressive. And it it really I was worried initially when we started playing. I was like, only one play aid. But really, to be honest, I thought it was clear. Once we did it a couple of times, mm -hmm. I think we understood really what you were checking for was which column. Because there's several shifts and several modifiers. Yeah. Other than that, it was it was very memorable. You could remember, oh, a, a leg unit in woods gets two shifts to the left. A tank only gets one. You, you know, yeah, that, that kind of thing. The terrain is very simple to understand from that standpoint. Yep. And the the one thing that's really cool about this game 
and I, it's kind of a it's quite small so I'll show you mm -hmm. when I show you all the board is weapon types um, and different units have their weapon their weapons and combat values in different colors yes and that's what signifies how good Range. of a weapon it is and, and, and in turn like what kind of weapon type it is basically yeah so you know your, your king tiger which has a i think it's like a 108 millimeter cannon might be 122 millimeter so absolutely ridiculously sized cannon yeah it, it, it's there's not a rule that says 108 millimeter cannon has this much range yeah it's just got a blue value it's blue right yep and that blue value is a line on a chart that tells you the range well, yeah, and you can kind of see it's a small chart here. And I'll show you a bit more close Do, up. Does this look blue to you, though, Alexander? Well, it doesn't. Yeah, it's purple. It doesn't. It's one thing we notice. It's purple. But, like, the right Yanked there. Panther, purple. the mouse. That's right. You yeah. have a mouse. Okay. It was <laughs> fun. It, was, it, it couldn't move, yeah. but, you know, it doesn't it matter. Move real life. It shot once, and it did a good job, and never moved again. But, like, all so the that was know, cool. big guns are in this, like, blue range band. And they have a blue yeah. value. So it's just really easy color identification for right. what you need to consult and then put it on a chart. And it's just a really neat system the way that they've done that. Yeah. Because instead of having, mm -hmm. you know, some games, you have like a data card of all your different values yeah. and bits and pieces. This condenses it all down onto a counter. They're big one-inch counters. Again, the production value you would expect from Flying yep. Pig, which they look great. But instead of having a ton of like super scripts for range and all these bits and pieces mm -hmm. it's this color with a number in it color yeah. with a number in it. nice and easy that way and basically blue and red are your best uh green, green and green's green's the bad. worst well black's the worst black's the worst okay. green second and then yellow so it, it's it's pretty simple you just have to remember that and and after after a while, I didn't even really have to look much at that. No, and the which charts, was nice. The chart's really nice because it just helps you to see. Yep. Oh, this is what I'm doing. Boop, you get away with it. And so the the pace of play, this one's very good. If yep. you don't get locked down making <laughs> making decisions, that's the only thing that's going to slow this game down. Is what, oh my gosh, I'm in a terrible tactical position. Yeah, right. right. And and this gives you a lot of choices, a lot of things to do. Yep. Um, but you know if you. If you if you don't get analysis paralysis, this game goes along pretty quickly. Well, and, and it was interesting. We played a seven round scenario, and I think our first two or three were learning the rules, uh, learning the rules, and then we started to carve up some units, so we got less units on the board. But by that third, fourth, and fifth round, man, we were. Yeah. I felt like we were humming through it, yeah. and then the sixth and seventh round, it was like there were very few decisions left because. It was down to only half a dozen real units. Yeah, the game's played units. itself out in the course yep. of the game, so it's just, how are we going to win this thing? So it, I thought it played well. I thought it uh, it kept my interest the entire... We played for about three hours. Yes. I, I, I thought it was very good. Would, I don't think it would take that long. No, this was a very interesting scenario with a lot of parameters and a lot of limitations. And it was very slow going. It was. Like, it was kind of... I was, I'm yeah. like roadblocking, trying to play yep. very defensively and very sticky. Well, when... When the when my side's units all start in two, literally two little piles, it, it's really difficult to get those units out and get moving. And then you kind of had turn to set up time to set up your roadblocks and take up the good terrain and be like, oh, come get me. And I did. I tried to come get you, and it was fun. But yeah, that's and so we played on a map, and we played a scenario from the expansion. Tracks in the mud. Tracks in the mud. Because I wanted to play with all the big tanks. Yeah, basically, tracks in the mud is like the double XL yeah, tanks, yeah. right? It's the king. I mean, and it, it was that my. It's got like the, the Yag Tiger, right? Which there was so few of them that actually saw any action. Yeah. The mouse, the mouse which was which, a prototype, didn't actually yep. see any action. Um, it's got American Pershings in it. Yep, uh, which Yag were very Panthers. good tanks. Just. I wanted to play with all the big guns. Yeah. So that's why we wanted to yeah, play that one. Half the time we don't get to. That's the, that's the fun stuff. Shoot yeah, the big right, guns right. Each other, right? Um, so there's a ton of scenarios between this and the expansion. Um, 12 in the base, right? I think it's 12 in the base. And, and then, some of them are like a linked little campaign, which is really cool. Yep. Um, but a lot of the maps, it's Kursk, right? So it's tank combat. Yeah. And so I'll just show you one of the boards. It's just a hill. That's all, a pretty big much hill. all it is, right? Yeah. You don't have a ton of terrain on this map, so when you're playing on it, those, you know, the 
the 10 to 14 range bands, right. yo, you can use all of that. We yeah. played on a very tight forested you, map. Range was about six. It was pretty tough to actually get range. And the other map is also just as open as that one. Got it. So that's, it, it, this is a really fun game where you get to use your tanks. You get to shoot across the whole board yep. and blow each other up. Um, just not so much in the scenario we played. No, no. Which, you know, it's funny at, at the beginning we talked about it. And we actually played a what if scenario. Yes, very well, much in, so. In June of 1945, so a, a whole month after the fall of, of Berlin, and you know it was like the Americans and the Germans <laughs> decided to team up. And fight the Soviets. And take, take out the Soviets because they were now the new threat uh, to democracy in the world. So very interesting. I had the Pershing tanks. I had the mouse, the Yag. Did I have a You had two, King Tiger. two Tiger twos. Yep. And then you had a Yag Panther. One. And then you, you know, you had a lot of tank killers, self-propelled guns. Yeah, and then what was a, your big, your T? I had my T-34, are they 85s? Yep. Yeah, 85s, which are pretty good tanks. They don't match up necessarily toe-to-toe -to -toe with the no with the King, but King Tiger. But we wanted that, and it was interesting because the, the scenario really made it more of a tactical yes. move here, take this spot move a little further ahead, get in good opportunity firing position, and then kind of wait it out. And you played it very well. I, You brought those four tanks on at the end, and it really made me sweat. And I had to force you to make decisions, and I liked that. Yes. This was a very different scenario for that. But it's it's a game that I think moves along in a good clip. I, the rules are not... How many pages of the rule book? I mean, it's not. It's uh, ten pages of rules. It's something crazy like that. Yeah, Those are scenarios. Yeah. Those don't count. Oh, these are the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the rules. It's like 10. The scenarios are the last the five pages. Actual pages of rules. It's 10 pages. Yeah. And Not a, a lot. And a war game that's got 10 pages of rules with diagrams and examples, which yeah. are very good and very helpful for and, line of sight. And really very clear rules. Yeah. We sat here. We read them. We, we had to talk about a couple of items. Yes. But after that, it was, it was pretty clear. I thought they were well written. Yeah. So kudos to Mark and... Uh, David for writing good rules and uh, the fact that it can just be put on the board the counters are pre-punched so yeah, you, you don't rounded. have to be a snob yeah. like me and clip them yep you just put them out they're the big thick counters and they're beautiful very well done very clear the hexes are huge on the board yep stacking limits two plus you'll have a couple markers strictly enforced but two. you don't have it's not huge stacks the biggest no. stacks but <laughs> the board's so big you're not they'll be Puts it around with your big fat fingers. Yeah. So it, it's a very playable, it's a great looking game as well. Yeah. So that's stuff that I really appreciate in a game like this yeah. and the scale it is as well. The other thing that I, I think we need to talk about a little bit is the is the CRT, the fire results table. You know, it it had a, a lot of hits, meaning if you roll well, if you roll low, you're going to do a lot of hits. But then every every hit those units have an opportunity to roll a morale check. Yes. I like that because it's not just an automatic hit. It's yeah. it's an opportunity to try to get away from that hit. Um, and, and I'll tell you, we, we rolled really well. I think the game would have been over much earlier. Yes. When we not the roll. Other. You, your morale was a three, and I swear you the were saving. The amount of threes or less I rolled was insane. On a ten-sider, that's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, but I liked that. I liked how it was you do this many hits. The lower you roll, the more it is. You also had critical hits, which were even worse. A critical hit can knock out a that's yeah that's an for armor a, unit for artillery, from artillery and mortars, or airstrikes. They can roll a crit, yep. which would uh, reduce armored units, which they normally can't do. Which I like that. I thought that's cool because that's realistic. You know, yeah, mortars not going to take and out it's a, a slim chance, very a, slim yeah. chance to do it, right? But you just happen. But I I like that fire results table. The close assault was pretty good, although it was. Risky. Each side lost a lot. Yes. Like a lot. Unless you start getting into really four times, five times odds. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it, it's a die roll. It's a crapshoot yeah. otherwise. It can be very difficult to affect. And we had a couple of those, but most of ours were two to one or one to one. Two to one, one to one. And that's... Each it's losing a, four. It's a coin flip at that point, yeah. really. There were is, a couple times where you assaulted me. I'm like, oh, thanks for doing that. You lost like five guys. And, <laughs> 
and then I did it the same, and it's like, oh, you were, you were yeah. like, thanks I, for doing or, that. Or I charged my infantry at your Tiger two, and we both just killed each other. Yeah, that was like, that was pretty funny. Win for me. Yeah. So I liked those those fire results table. I thought they were, it was it was a different way to do that, and I liked yes. that. One thing about this game is it we uses ten siders, which typically I like games that use something other than a d six. Just for a change of pace. You have a wider range of results. Yes. You know, a six-sider, you, a one and a two is usually really bad. A five and a six is awesome, and everything else in between is... And this this game is a reverse bucket of dice, is what yeah. I'm going to call it. Yeah. Because normally a bucket of dice, the attacker just picks up this and goes... And, <laughs> yeah. and that's just how many hits I do. But in this one, calculate all your odds, find, right. find your column, the attacker rolls 1d10, Yep. and that... On that CRT you talked about, three or four hits, them or... X amount of hits. Yeah, and so if you're all really well, I might take six potential hits, seven mm -hmm. potential hits. So I'm going to roll. I'm as the defender. I'm going to roll six d10, trying yeah. to roll my morale value or less. Yeah, and so it, you know it's kind of the defender has the bucket of dice in this, which is not yeah. normally the case. It's is, is what I've experienced. Yeah. That but that was, cool. was that's always fun. Uh, it was always quite. Terrifying though. It, it was. Because having yeah. to roll, you know, each unit has effectively three steps. Yeah. And when you're rolling six dice, needing threes or less, you're like, okay. But it was interesting. Uh, we we yeah. actually rolled a lot of low numbers. It was very odd. And no, very odd. knowing that, yeah. there was a lot of dice, like there's a ton of dice rolling in this game. Yeah. And I've, we've Which talked is about okay. this. Dice rolling either has to be basically not there or an absolute crap ton of yeah. it. So that you get a good even, even out over average time. in theory over the course of the game. And and you know it was interesting in this game, I didn't mind the dice rolling. Like I really felt like eh, it was okay. I rolled six times, I didn't save at all. I knew next time I'm gonna save every time. It, yeah, it or felt I was like gonna it was lose even. them all. And, th and, yeah. and that's that's what I mean by that, you know, over the course of a game, it the sheer out. number of rolls, you'll get decent yeah. average across the yeah. board. What was that game that we play that was a bucket of dice? Fields of Despair. World War One. Yes. And remember they had the table? That was cool, too, where you like had a statistical analysis of it, and it's like, if you roll 12 dice, you're going to hit two times. Or Yes. Y you know, that would be an interesting thing to do for, although it's only six or seven, but... Yeah, you could forego dice rolling and just use the table. Use it, but it's less fun. Dice yeah. rolling's fun. Yes, it is. The other thing I enjoyed, the cards. Um, the scenario kind of tells you how many cards you have, and it's a it's a really small deck of cards. Yeah, like I how many cards are twenty? Maybe twenty. I didn't count Twenty-five. Them. I'll count them real quick. Yeah, I'll continue. Yeah, but the, the cards they're multi-use, not multi-use. They are dual-use cards, meaning if you're the Soviets and 18. you draw a card, how many? Eighteen. Eighteen. So if you're the Soviets and you draw one or two cards, you're going to look at the top part, and the Germans are going to look at the bottom part. So I like that. You, you might get that card and go, oh, I got his only airstrike, or I got that one card that you kept using that disrupted my unit. It was a sniper attack with sniper. There you go. The driver. I couldn't run off the board, which was what I was trying to do there at the end. But those cards, they just throw some variety and a little bit of chaos and yeah, a little you bit get, of... We got two a turn, so you might be able to use one of them. Or two. Two one of or you two, are very yeah. lucky. Yeah. Um, but... It's not game breaking. No, they can be game anno annoying. Yeah, I, it's more annoying because there were a couple of times I'm like, oh, really? He got that card again, and but it's things like rally a unit, disrupt a unit, add a couple of column shifts, an airstrike, an artillery strike. So it's it's realistic things that it just adds some variety. Yeah, and yeah. a little, little bit of chaos. Yeah, and it's there's 18 cards in the deck. We had a seven turn scenario, which is. Pretty average, I think. So we each had 14 cards. We went through the deck twice, pretty much. Yeah. We're very close yeah. to doing that. Um, there's, yeah, those are a nice little extra thing. Yeah. And that's kind of typical. Do you remember OST? Mm -hmm. You get we get one card for the whole scenario. Yeah, and they're like... Just a random yeah, thing. Yeah, they're really cool, and you just have to use it one time. So this those this reminded cool. me of that, but there's a yeah. bit more of it. Um, it's That's where your off-board artillery comes from. That's where your yeah. airstrikes come from, like you said. And then a couple other bits and pieces of oh, right. double move or this yeah. guy can opportunity fire without any recourse, basically. Right, right. You know, it's just extra little tidbits just to 
Yeah, Sweet. or the minefield. That yeah. was another. That was fun. You put up the minefields a couple of times. So definitely interesting element. The having the cards added. I don't know if you took them out. Would it change the game that much? I I don't think so. But it's probably been balanced with that in mind yeah. because some of those are. I think the artillery stuff in there is very important. Yeah, that's on, that's the only way you get artillery. Yes. So and and you got it, the timing of cycling through and finding those right. and being able to use them is is a is a important factor in the game I think so I think right. I do enjoy them being in there and how they you don't just have like a set number of this and this is how and when you use yeah. it yeah it's not like you have a track here saying you have five artillery strikes yeah. or three air strikes and, and it was interesting my Stukas were far superior to your were they yaks? I don't know if we decided that... It was that... an IL-2. Okay. I don't really know what that is. I don't right. know my Russian Air Force. Yeah, I don't know that I know either. I but... don't think it's a yak. It doesn't look that one. No. I mean, it looks similar, but yeah, I, I can see. I don't know what a yak looks like. Yeah, you do. We've played... Yeah, I kind of know what it looks like, but, but... It looks like a yak to me, but I don't know. Well, who you knows? Decide. Tell, Tell me us. if it's a yak yeah. or not. But it was interesting. My Stuka, really good against armor. Yeah, Yours, not armor. so good. Nah. And then they were both the same against uh, infantry. infantry. So that was a neat little element. You used it, and you could bring it back in, in future rounds. So lots of neat little things like that. But yeah, it's it's a great scale. Um, it's a really cool little combat system. And what I'll do is I'll show you that right now, and then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at the map, and I'm just going to first apologize, because we have terrible lighting here in this room. So you can't actually see how nice the colors on this map are. These look like a very dark brownish green and kind of awful. But actually we've got a very yellow light in here and it's discolored the, the uh, um, kind of the, the coloration in the camera shot. But this is, I promise, I swear to you, this is a really nice looking board. <laughs> if you watch the unboxing video, uh, we shot in different light and you'll see it's much, much nicer. Um, these are, it's a very, just a, a, just a different tone of greens than you see in, in war games. And it makes this game kind of stand out from other ones for that reason. Um, from a board standpoint, you can see these huge hexes. And it, it's kind of these little, just the hex corners are marked with big, large um, identification markers. Um, that way, it's not just a very unseemly, very heavily printed hex um, grid. So it's really nice looking, very clear terrain. We've got a huge mess of counters. We were counting up all the scoring. Let's get rid of these. All right. So again, really, really like the look of this game. And we'll take a look at some of the counters here just to kind of show you how, what we're looking at. So we have here, we have some Russian infantry and we have a little self-propelled gun here, the SU-100. And we're going to, just go through the infantry counter first. Basically, they have these two values on the on the left. Oh, let's get these in focus here. We have two values on the left. Here we've got a black zero and a green four. And the the silver belt gun, the SE one hundred, has a blue ten and a green ten. These are the um, basically their combat values. This top number is their um, armor piercing value. It's their, basically their anti-armor, anti-vehicle rating. This bottom number, this 4 and this 10, are their kind of soft target, high explosive value. So you can see the infantry effectively can't fire on tanks. But against other infantry, they got a 4 rating. This, he's got a 10 rating against armor, which is good, and a 10 rating Basically, it's hull mounted machine guns against infantry, also very good. You might ask yourself, why on earth are the infantry in this game? Well, the infantry are in this game because this is a combined arms game. You want to have these stacked together so that when you fire this guy's 10, he's going to get a column shift from this guy just simply supporting him. Think about it basically like a tank or an AFV supported by a platoon of troops walking behind them. Um, keeping them from being like flanked or um, close assault. That's where you, your attack value becomes much stronger. So this is a game of combined arms and you will want to combine your arms to get your best attack values. The other um, factors we have here 
This little middle number at the bottom, this is a 2 for the infantry and this is a 5. That's a movement factor, movement points, spend them over terrain, kind of how you would expect. This bottom right hand corner, which has a little grey background, is its close assault value. This tank it has a one assault value in melee, basically. Just, you, you can't put a bayonet on a tank, let's be honest. Infantry has an eight close assault value. They're very good at doing that. If infantry close assault a tank, you basically look at an eight to one odds. They're basically going to knock out a tank every single time. So don't leave your tanks <laughs> undefended without infantry support. It's really what you're looking at with that. Now you'll notice this tank here has this 4 value, infantry doesn't have it. This is an armor value. So this 4 is what's going to go up against an, another unit's anti-tank rating. So let's take our Tiger 2. They're going to shoot each other. Basically this 14 value, again it's a Tiger 2, it's a huge cannon. Tiger 2 has a 14 value. He's going to subtract the armor of a 4 and then you're left with 10 and then you consult the glorious play aid. So we look at 10, you find your um, combat value here, we have a 10, you apply any shifts from things like terrain, range, and then you basically roll a d10 and look at the results. So let's look at that range aspect. Remember we had a King Tiger, and he's attacking this SU-100. Note, his value is blue. So we consult the little chart here, and this is the one error in the game, and it kills me. This is purple, not blue. We assume this is supposed to be blue, because there's nothing else purple in the game. <laughs> so, he has a blue weapon, and if they're within four hexes or less, it's considered short range. At short range, we get a one column shift to the right. That's good for the attacker. So we were at ten, we're going to get a column shift to the right. Let's say that SU-100 is in the woods. They're going to get a column shift back to the left for defensive terrain. And this is the table we're going to roll upon. So you roll a D10. So let's grab our D10s here. The attacker rolls a single D10. Oh, and you roll a zero, which is perfect. A zero is the best possible result. You're trying to roll low in this game. So on the 10, we roll a 0. So this 8 here means we have 8 potential hits. So the defender, this poor little SU-100, has to roll 8 D10s, and the Russians have a morale value of 3. So on 8 D10s, we need to get a 3 or less. So we have, this is a hit, this is a hit, this is a hit, this is a hit. These two save. That's six dice. We're going to roll two more. These are also both hits. So we take six hits. Well, each unit has effectively three steps. The first step, you add a disrupted marker, which basically puts you out of action. You can't really move or attack. The second step reduces you under that marker, and the third step eliminates you. So we took six hits. Well, we can only take three. Um, if I was stacked with another unit, for example, let's say I had a little infantry unit there as well. If these were stacked together, no, oh, that's not my SU-100. Not all sure I did with it. There you go. I lost it. Oh well. We'll just stick this guy here for now. <laughs> he just became a T-34. My six hits, I have to spread them evenly between these two guys. If it was possible, well, that's a bad example. Mm, that's my other T-34. Here it is. Okay. Let's say we attack these two guys. Basically, um, six hits. This guy can take three. This guy can take three. You divide them evenly. They're both eliminated. Now, there's some other really interesting bits and pieces that go on here. If we look at this King Tiger, and I didn't just calculate that because I wanted to show you. He has a little minus one, really tiny. Oh, it's a plus one. A really tiny plus one superscript there. Not all of the units have those kind of things. But that's basically its combat effectiveness. So when I rolled that zero, it actually was modified to a one. And the difference between a zero and one on that ten table is the difference between eight hits and seven hits. That doesn't seem like a big difference at that point, but when you start getting down here, the difference between a four and a three is the difference between 
a unit staying alive and a unit dying because of the just the odds on calculating how many dice you're going to chuck for those morale saves. That was a pretty decent roll. Um, those little superscripts, there aren't a lot of them in the game, but it reflects um, some really interesting bits and pieces. Um, and what I liked about that was that's how they model combat effectiveness, um, just from a historical standpoint. So you have here this little half track. If it attacks, um, if it uses its defensive value at any point, for like if it gets shot by a tank, this is its armor value, it's a minus one, which means it's easier to shoot this poor guy um, because he's got very thin armor. It's there, but it's not very good. The Panzer Fours have a, I think they have a plus one rating because whilst they're decent, the guns didn't have stabilizers on them the same way that uh, that, uh, that allied tanks did. So the guns necessarily weren't necessarily as effective as they could have been. So you do have this, this really neat little range system which gives you effectiveness over range. The further you are away, the more column shifts you get or don't get. But you also have a couple of these superscripts and that's where the minutia of the game comes in. There's not a lot of it, but it's you still get some of that real detail that you would find in a tactical game. And I find that stuff very, very interesting, and that's what I really enjoy in a game. Um, outside of that, movement is movement, moving along roads, you're moving, you know, kind of your easy movement. Moving in terrain gets pretty tricky and kind of slow, but the maps aren't huge, so you're really not super duper far away from anything. And if you really put your mind to it, you can get places. Um, here's a couple of big tanks. If you look at their movement factors, they have a little explosion behind them. And that explosion behind them means that they can move half movement and attack. And that is not normally the case. And that becomes really important for timing. And I'm just going to show you here the sequence of play, because this game has a very, very interesting kind of order of operations of how you play. And that will determine um, some of your tactics that you employ. So it's all your kind of normal start of turn stuff. Determine initiative, you can draw two of the cards that we can, that we talked about. Then there's a little rally phase. Again, that's fairly standard. Everyone who's disrupted might try to become undisrupted. And then it's the fire phase. You shoot first, and then it's the movement phase. Then you move. So you have to line up your shots the previous turn, do your shots, and then you move to line up shots for the next turn. After you do the movement, there's kind of close assault, if you have any, and then some kind of bookkeeping bits and pieces here. Now, why this is important is because a lot of other games might give you the freedom to either move or shoot and do that at your leisure. The structure of this game means that you really have to consider your tactical options. It's not, it's not enough to just like drive out willy-nilly and, you know, leave yourself out in the open, but you have to line yourself up with good shots, hopefully you're trying to get some good cover, because if you're banking on that determine initiative phase, which is a D10 dice roll off, quite simply, that's very, very risky. Um, sometimes the, the game situation, I mean, you have to do that, because that might be your last ditch gamble, but I would not recommend banking your um, general overall strategies and doing that. Uh, but all in all, you can see it, the, the map has a lot on it, but it's got channels, there's good tactical choices to make, and this is just one of two uh, maps in the base game. This isn't even the base game, this is the expansion map, but there's two other maps. Um, it's, just a, it's just a super fun little game, and this, again, I can't speak to it enough, this system where you have these colors, and that determines your range bands because of the quality, of the, basically the size, of the guns, which then give you shifts based on those range bands, that is a really neat way of keeping you from having data cards and a ton of extra rules, and it keeps you played to simply this card and on here as well. So there's a lot to like in this game. The close assault is bloody. If you can get in there and do it, it's basically odds-based combat and Defender is going to take this many losses. Attack is going to take this many losses, and it's it's just brutal. Um, but if you can, if you can do that, again, 
if that's your tactical aspect, your squad level games where you get into really stabbing each other on the side of a building with two guys, you kind of get a small sampling of that in this where your infantry that have a, like their close assault values in eight, they can jump a king tiger from out of the woods and they've got two to one odds and suddenly your big cat feels very, very vulnerable out in the open. And I just really like a game that, that allows you to kind of um, get some tactical feel on it whilst not being super duper crunchy and only being 10 pages long. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of wrap up with a few final thoughts here and get you squared away. So that was a look at the board, the little combat table, how combat works, and a little bit of the rules there. Very simple game, really. Yeah. Nothing I, again, too difficult. 10 pages of rules. Yeah. I love that. As someone who reads way too many rule books, yeah. it's like humanly healthy. Uh, ten pages of rules for a game with, you know, five or six counter sheets and, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the scenarios that it has. Normally those games have a lot more to them of, like, trying to consume minutia. It really doesn't have that. Yeah. It's really easy to play and really easy to learn, and I think that's a credit well, to it, the design. It, in my opinion, it's a system that was designed to be repetitive in the way you do things. Not repetitive in the way you play them, but... To really ingrain in in your mind as you're doing your strategy, here's what's going to happen, and, and I liked that. I liked looking at the colors of of the weapons. I I liked understanding immediately when I looked across the board and saw your blue mortar there, going, "That thing's powerful." It's got a very I, long range. I liked that because I could immediately spot that, and you know, other than that, I would have had to got up close and look at the number, but I liked the color. Yeah. Um, very well done system. A couple of things that, that I liked real quickly and then a, a couple of things that I maybe didn't like. One thing we really liked was the map. Yeah, it's we've a played, great looking map. We've played OST and they have the huge maps that typically you only play one quarter of the map. If that. And, and I don't like that. I've never liked that. Sorry, Mark. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like to have two huge maps. I like to have smaller maps that I can... And this came with two two maps. Yes, you had two maps in the base game. And a third in the Tracks in the Mud yes. expansion. So really, you have three maps that you can move around and have, I don't know, 12 to 15 different... Between the combinations and how you turn them all and set them up, you could have a, a lot of different combinations between right. that. Um, so if you wanted to just make up your own scenario, yeah. you could do that. You could build deal. your own. So I like that. I like the smaller maps. I like the way they looked. I liked the cards. I thought they were fun. The only thing I don't like about these games, and Armageddon War really addressed this, mm. I don't like the administrative counters covering up the units. It bothers me. Because it, how many times did we have to take everything off to, as we were doing combat? And I felt in our Armageddon War, we kind of got away from that, right? We did that trapezoidal, whatever we called that whatever it was i don't remember and we get you know flag around. thing that stuck out the side and you know oh he was whatever well, this guy's fine this guy yeah moved. you can you could do that with these i i feel like i'm i'm like oh why didn't we do that because i'm telling you 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 get a disrupted and and a couple other markers on there and it's hard to tell what's how many times did i say man you've got three units there no i don't it was one unit it's one unit with a a rally a marker on yeah, it, yeah. And a, aid, aid marker, and he had a disrupted marker. Yeah, but and, it looked like a stack a of marker. three units, and so that was the only thing I really didn't like because I really liked Armageddon War, and I really liked the way they used those those counters. That's my opinion. Those are the three things that I really caught from this game. You'll you'll have different things, I'm sure, but yeah, I'm so I'm a huge fan of this scale. So this is kind of right up my alley yep. again. Production value is kind of off the charts yeah. with this. Um, if I had to quibble, a second play aid, if so, just so someone could be sat across <laughs> yep. the table and have yep. one. But what's to stop me from photocopying that? Yeah, you can Nothing. photocopy it. Right. Um, it's 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 a great yeah. looking game. I like the <laughs> I like the color palette, which just sounds really yeah. lame. But it's so yeah. many games out there use drab, very like, drab colors, and this uses just just different looking. Yep. And and I enjoy that. Um, the counters are fantastic. The, mm -hmm. it's, everything's very clear what everything's supposed to be. Um, I never once, I think, had a real question about what the drain was. 
No. Which is fantastic. And I, and I really like that. And the rules are very clear about that. Yep. You basically trace from center hex to center mm -hmm. hex and intervening hexes. Yep. Do, you don't get any convolution of like, oh, this one tree out to the side a little bit just for yep. artwork's sake is not... Yeah, because you're doing center to center. Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, the, yeah, it's just it's a really nice game from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. Rules were easy to learn, and the game was very playable. Yep, and and very accessible to get to quickly. Yes, after two rounds of this, we had you know what we were doing. Yep, and, and that's just that's a huge credit. Yep. to the design for me. That's something that I like in a game for it to be. Yeah. Now, a lot of times, because you're so good at rules and because we have played so many games, I, but I do think, I, sometimes I wonder, is it really that easy? Or are we just, we get things more quickly because we've played so many. True. This one, I really feel like, though, it's it's clear enough and, and direct enough that I think anybody can get this. And really play what I think is a fairly big war game without a lot of extra rules that are unnecessary. I think this just plays very well, very quickly, and you remember what you need to remember. And it's Kursk, so it's yeah. a ton of tanks, and yeah. you're blowing each other to hell. If you like tanks, this is the game for you. I mean, it was kind of like Armageddon War. It was a lot of tanks. A lot of tanks. This is a lot of tanks, too, and I like that. I yeah. really do. Like this, there's like an entire sheet of Russian T-34. So, so you too. know there's a scenario... I mean, it's a bunch. That there's like, like 35 like tanks on the Open board. terrain and a hill. Yeah. And you're just like, it's open tanks. And we need to play that. Yeah. We need to play that one. We chose a different one. We chose a what if, which was fun. I really enjoyed that. Yes. I wanted to see the big tanks from the yep. uh, expansion. And you wanted to see boy, the XL they powerful. Yeah, they are. Man, that mouse uh, just shot with a 16. It was it crazy. Creeps along with his two movement patterns and yeah. blows you away. So. Yeah. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, this has been Platoon Commander Deluxe. Kursk from Flying Pig Games, and we've been the players at .com. Thank you.